Good evening and welcome. I trust everyone is relaxed at home this evening and uh, kicked back with a nice cup of herb tea, warm blanket. Actually, you don't need the warm blanket or the uh, hot tea. You probably could do the iced tea. 60 degrees out there today, hard to believe. But uh, welcome. Hope everybody's enjoying the holiday season. And, you know, one of the things, of course, that uh, unfortunately uh, tends to happen during the holiday season, an awful lot of different kind of eating, and uh, certainly an awful lot of folks uh, during this period of time tend to indulge on fattier food and increase the uh, amount of fatty acids in their diet. Of course, there are good fats and uh, there are bad fats, and we're going to talk a little bit tonight about that. We're going to give you the skinny on fat, if you will. And uh, folks really, I think, need to uh, focus in on the fact that fats are, by many accounts, responsible for uh, a tremendous amount of biological damage uh, from nutrition, from a nutritional perspective. Uh, a number of experts estimate that 70% of all early untimely preventable death is specifically and directly related to either insufficient amounts of good fat or an excess of very potentially dangerous bad fats. So, uh, you know, the idea of good fat, bad fat is a very powerful influence over things like health, longevity, and of course uh, preventable untimely death as well. And uh, many diseases are caused by certain fatty acid deficiencies, and many of those diseases, of course, can be uh, uh, overcome by properly supplying those very same essential fatty acids. And, uh, you know, we think of fats as just a substance that puts a little extra weight around the belt buckle, not so. Uh, fats also influence what are called super hormones in the body, or eicosanoids, and the assembly lines of those eicosanoids, uh, which can really set up or reverse a great many diseases. Uh, there's a tremendous, tremendous uh, amount of hormones that we produce that produce inflammation in the body. When you think of heart disease, when you think of arthritis, when you think of cancer even, uh, virtually all disease really has an inflammatory component to it. And it all starts and originates realistically with the wrong kind of fats. And by over-consuming the wrong kind of fats, we run the great risk of producing inflammatory assembly lines in our body and increasing the risk factors for uh, cancers, heart disease, arthritis, etc. So I think it's really uh, key that we understand that fats really, and from a nutritional and a food-based perspective, uh, ultimately contribute largely. Well, many experts, again, estimate that 70%, that's a, that's a remarkable figure, uh, but 70% of all preventable death directly related to either not enough good fat or too much bad fat. Now, of course, again, as I said earlier, this time of year, there's a lot of folks that are consuming a lot of saturated fat, uh, there's a lot of folks that are consuming a lot of sugars, a lot of starch, a lot of simple, highly processed carbohydrates. And uh, it's really unfortunate that most folks are not aware of the fact that there is a direct corollary there, uh, not just between fat and weight gain, for example, but between fat and, as we said, inflammation, uh, between fat and anti-inflammation. As we all know, fish oils, for example, are good fats. Flax oils are good fats that help us to prevent and really reverse the process of inflammation in our body. Uh, and we we're talking about uh, hormonal-based inflammation and hormonal-based anti-inflammation. So once again, fats are largely responsible for the production of either hormones that create inflammation in our chemistry or hormones that actually create anti-inflammation in our chemistry. Uh, so there are essentially six fatty acids that are what we refer to as the essential fatty acids. Now, the word essential really basically means that you don't supply them by yourself and have an absolute need for these substances. So the six essential fatty acids, uh, many are familiar with the DHA that, are, that is in fish oil, of course, that's one of your essentials. EPAs, uh, also part of the fish oil construct that is considered an essential fatty acid. Another fat called alpha-linolenic acid, which is also essential. And, of course, alpha-linolenic acid, or ALAs, are very rich in soy products. So a lot of folks, of 
course, continue to read in their various health magazines about how soy helps us to reverse heart disease. And one of the main reasons for that, of course, is the alpha-linolenic acid, which is a good essential fatty acid, one of the six. And number four, a gamma-linolenic acid, which can be both inflammatory and anti-inflammatory. The first three that I mentioned, the DHA, the EPAs that are in fish oils, and the alpha-linolenic acid that's in soy, folks, these are all anti-inflammatory. Keep that in mind, anti-inflammatory. Uh, the last two fatty acids, linoleic acid and arachidonic acid, are inflammatory. They're inflammatory. Uh, and the idea that uh, there are fats such as DHAs in fish oils that can help anti-inflame our arteries, anti-inflame our muscles, our joints, our ligaments, our immune cells. And on the, the op opposite side of that coin, there are fats such as arachidonic acid uh, which, by the way, you'll find in abundance in peanuts, egg yolks, dairy products, red meats, and these arachidonates or arachidonic acid fats are very inflammatory and can increase the risks for clotting factor, for blood clots, uh, for inflammatory arthritis, for lupus, for rheumatoid, for various cancers, etc. And this is all done through the process of fats being converted, converted to what are called icosanoids in the body, or super hormones, because hormones are all comprised of fat. So when you and I are eating fatty uh, substances, whether it be good fatty substances from fish, etc., or negative fatty substances uh, from too much red meat, uh, dairy products, etc., these fats ultimately will convert into super hormones or icosanoids, which then become fully matured hormones, and all hormones produce inflammation or anti-inflammation. So all this process of disease-based inflammation and uh, disease curative or disease reversing uh, anti-inflammation are all originating from the standpoint of fats, fatty acids from foods. So uh, we're going to kind of give you the entire skinny on that whole process and how disease is generated from fatty acids in the diet, which ones to avoid what kind of ratios you want to maintain to prevent disease and to really construct a healthy biochemistry from a healthy diet that has the proper mix of fats that keep you alive and healthy throughout the new year to come on and on and on. We'll be right back. We'll take a short little break. Alrighty, welcome back in. Uh, interesting uh, website that uh, I had the good fortune of being turned on to. It's www.rayhammond, that's one, one uh, word, rayhammond, R-A-Y-H-A-M-M-O-N-D.com. Ray Hammond is a Brit who is a futurologist, uh, and he has a remarkable site about uh, various futuristic realities that are unfolding from science, etc. But I've got this one little piece I want to share with you. Uh, glimpses of the future, a pill that will keep you thin and fit. A pill that delivers the health benefits of diet and exercise without any of the effort is one step closer to becoming a reality. European scientists have found that mice fed a high-fat, high-calorie diet and prevented from exercising regularly can be protected from weight gain and metabolic disorders when given a drug that targets a gene linked to longevity. The treatment even increases the animal's running endurance. The drug was developed last year by Sirtris Pharmaceuticals, based in Cambridge, Mass. And preliminary studies of the compound showed it to be effective in treating mice models of type 2 diabetes, a disease that results in an impaired ability to produce or process insulin, the risk of which increases with age. Interesting stuff. So a pill that delivers the health benefits of diet and exercise without any effort is one step closer to becoming a reality, folks. Now, why am I not surprised? Nonetheless, if you're interested in uh, taking a glance at such interesting uh, stuff, you could go to uh, www.rayhammond.com and check out Futurology. Hey, Brenda, how are you? Good, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year also. I'm becoming more aware, and I'm becoming more well. Love hearing that. I don't know about why, but I'm getting there. Oh, I'm sure you are. Okay. Um, my question is, I ordered, uh, 
um, a book of yours. Have you not dropped off any books at um, the Hanover store? You know, I'm probably a little delinquent there. It's been a little uh, crazy during the holiday season, but I'll make sure I get over there. Actually, tomorrow I can. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing some uh, filming tomorrow. But, oh, awesome. That uh, would be great. I'll definitely get over there for you. I'll give you my word I'll do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that still happening on the 16th of January? You know, I think the person you're going to want to talk to, I can give you a phone number. It is indeed Candida, and it's 781-834-2728. Uh, that's that's I the... I called and left a message on how I came, but I haven't had a response from her. Well, we'll make sure you, you, will, you will get your word on that. I'll, I'll speak with her this evening myself okay. to make sure you get uh, followed up on that. Great question. It's one of the things uh, I, I really uh, want to tackle this evening, so let's use this as that opportunity. Flax is very rich in omega-3 fats. In fact, you know, the omega-3 fats, everybody's always uh, reading stories about the potential healing effects of omega-3 fats, and indeed there's a really powerful, powerful response with regards to omega-3 omega fats. And the real key with, with good fat is the uh, concentration of these omega-3 fats. And the fish oils, of course, have gotten all the attention because fish oils are, of course, uh, uh, probably more, more written about and more studied. Well, everybody's studying the, the fish oils, and there's a tremendous amount of scientific information that, of course, supports uh, the healing effects of fish oils. But, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. I think the key really here is it's not just about fish oils, and we're talking about omega-3s, the flax as well. In fact, when you think about the amount of omega-3 fats that are in fish oils, the omega-3 fats in fish oils are actually surpassed by the omega-3 fats in flaxseed oil. So flaxseed oil... Well, the, the oil that's in the seeds is actually more healthfully obtainable directly in those seeds. What I usually tell people to do is skip on the oil and to get the seeds from the health food store, keep them refrigerated, and then add a tablespoon or two to whatever you're going to have the next day. But you, well, I think you need to get a dedicated coffee grinder, okay? And you want to grind them fresh. You want to grind them right out of the fridge. Really? Absolutely. Oh. Don't want to consume those seeds whole. You want to get a dedicated, you know, get a cheap coffee grinder, and you want to throw a couple tablespoons in there first thing in the morning and grind them up and then add them to, you know, your oatmeal or whatever you're having uh, during the breakfast meal. Yep. Well, that's that's definitely the way to do it. I think that uh, far better than the oils because you know that we're going to get into talking a little bit tonight about how oils are processed. You know, things like cold pressed. What does that mean? And, and and is it important that when I buy my olive oil, if that's the kind of oil I best use, uh, should I get the cold press and and all that business? And I, I think we're going to learn a little bit about all that stuff, but I think uh, the main question answer here for you is definitely keep that flax oil going, and I would tell you to forget the oils. You want to take a tablespoon or two and grind it up fresh every morning right out of the fridge. That's the best way to go. One more question. Sure. <laughs> right. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure. You'd have to ask them about that. I'm really not sure when that's going to be released, but uh, it's certainly going to be out, and I uh, thank you for bringing that up, and I thank you for all your great support with my books, etc. So. Oh, fantastic. So you're, you're, you're working real hard at, uh, at, at, your, at your New Year's health uh, regimes. Hey, Brenda, have a wonderful New Year and a, and a healthy. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. There's somebody who's working very hard at her New Year's program, wants to make sure that she's putting all that wonderful information to good use, and uh, that's really what it's all about. So we want to kind of get back in here and talk a little bit specifically about fats and uh, a couple things that I did want to bring up, some important things. We, we mentioned uh, just before the last break that, you know, there's good fats, bad fats, and that's kind of really what we're talking about this evening, but we can't let sugar off the hook here because sugar intake in excess 
of what the body can use for energy converts into saturated fat and cholesterol. Keep that in mind. I'm going to say it one more time, and I'm going to say it slowly, and I want you to really hear this, because we're constantly, constantly being uh, deluged with information about cholesterol, but nobody, but nobody, is making the point that sugar converts to cholesterol, and that's really essential. Sugar intake, the amount of sugar that you eat, in excess of what your body can use for energy, converts into saturated fat, the kind that clogs your arteries, causes arteriosclerosis and heart attacks, and it also converts into cholesterol. Okay, The number of folks that I've seen over the years who are on vegetarian diets or vegan diets, folks who do not eat animal foods at all, folks who exercise. I saw an attorney a number of years ago from, uh, from downtown Boston who was really frustrated. He said he'd been everywhere, and he was quite frustrated with his, uh, his uh, problems with his arteries. And uh, he, he got in, and he sat down with me and said, you know, I'm really confused because, number one, I've been a vegan or a vegetarian for a number of years and no animal foods whatsoever, no butters, no red meats, etc. And he said, you know, I exercise 90 minutes six days a week. And he was fit and trim. He wasn't overweight. And I explained to him as I went through his diet that a lot of the starch and a lot of the sugar in his diet, which was fairly abundant, uh, merely converts into the cholesterol that was driving up his cholesterol numbers. So... Uh, instead of uh, putting him through the, you know, the uh, pharmaceutical rigors of statin drugs, and you know, they, they, his physicians were threatening that uh, perhaps he would need some kind of uh, maybe even open heart surgery uh, because they were really, really dissatisfied with the amount of arterial clogging that he was uh, dealing with. But nonetheless, um, you know, over a period of a year and a half or so of just really turning the diet around and cutting down on the sugars, really cutting out the, sh the processed sugars, and really cutting down significantly on the starches and the processed carbohydrates, he completely reversed his problem without medications, etc. So, important point, please remember that. Sugar intake in excess of what your body can use for energy converts into saturated fats and into cholesterol. So, very important stuff. Um, the other thing, too, is, is we want to make sure that people are familiar with the fact that uh, not all of the um, oils out there and not all the fats out there are good just because uh, they, they come from vegetable sources. Um, a lot of people really need to realize that for years uh, we were told that polyunsaturated fats, you know, uh, Florence Henderson, uh, her oil had to have a certain kind of wessonality, remember that? Uh, well, those were not always the best choices. We didn't know that. We've certainly learned a great deal. Uh, the science of nutrition and a lot of the technology and research, of course, is moving ever so speedily. And uh, as time goes on, we continue to unfold and learn more and more. And in subsequent years from those former ad campaigns of the mid-70s when everybody became uh, heart disease aware and polyunsaturatedly programmed, uh, we finally turned things around and, and discovered through scientific research that polyunsaturated fats are not the way to go. Margarine, not the way to go. I always tell folks that uh, margarine uh, was actually the technology of developing oleomargarine was developed in the late 50s. And uh, food scientists actually obtained the recipes from the soap manufacturers in France. And they were putting emollients, various uh, oil-based lubricants, if you will, moisturizers, into soaps because folks were complaining that soaps were drying out their skin. So, well, the French figured out a way to basically create this moisturizing effect by putting these emollients, these moisturizers, in soaps. Uh, and yet, even though there was an oil in that bar of soap, it was still solid. Was the bar of soap solid? Yes, of course. Uh, yet uh, they somehow found a way to get this moisturizing oil-based liquid into this solid soap bar. So margarine makers said, hey, how can we take oils from corn, for example, in cotton oil and things like that, and safflower, and how can we somehow harden them to make them butter-like? Well, they basically did the same thing that the soap makers did. They added a hydrogen compound because hydrogen really collects 
all of that fat and solidifies it. Problem there is when you make margarine and you solidify the corn oil and convert that corn oil into a hardened butter-like substance called margarine, by adding that hydrogen compound, you really confuse the human body biologically. The human body hasn't got a clue, a clue of how to identify with or deal with that extra hydrogen molecule. So on the market shelves, hey, looks great. Looks really good. Boy, we actually made a fake butter. Isn't that something? Wow. Aren't we special? Well, that's great, guys. It looks terrific in the box, in the freezer section. You did a great job mimicking butter. Problem is, you're going to cause more arterial sclerosis, more heart attacks uh, than red meat, than prime rib, and then, uh, you know, than lard. So, again, the body does not identify with this extra, extra hydrogen compound. So stay away from margarines. Now, I know that there's a new generation of margarines out there. And uh, there are many of the earth balances and smart balances and things of this nature that do not have that extra hydrogen compound, compound added. So, yeah, those are safe for all intents and purposes. I still suggest that people actually use butter, but don't use it to the extent that they're probably inclined to cut your butter usage down to a teaspoon or two a day at the most. Um, the body has become accustomed to dealing with saturated fat. It's, it's no stranger to the human body. Saturated fat is something that the human body has, it produces on its own. Most people are not aware of the fact that uh, while they're watching uh, furiously to make sure that they don't consume more than 300 milligrams of cholesterol a day, that right within their own body they're producing 1,500 milligrams of cholesterol a day. Yes, I did say 1,500. So in other words, while the, the American Medical Association is telling us not to consume more than 300 milligrams of cholesterol in our diet any, on any given day, at the very same time, right within our own body, our liver is producing 1,500 milligrams of its own cholesterol. So saturated fat is no stranger to the human body. Therefore, I recommend use butter because your body knows how to deal with that saturated fat. It's not the butter that's the problem. It's the tablespoon that you keep loading up with butter. So your objective is to just cut way back to a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half, maximum two teaspoons, then you're done for the day. Of course, uh, as we said a moment ago, the, uh, the real key here is to make sure that you understand the difference between good fat, bad fat. Uh, let's start off really quickly here with the omega-3s. The omega-3s are the essential fatty acids that are at the top of the totem pole. The absolute highest of the list here would be alpha linolenic acid omega-3s uh, found in fatty fish, flax seeds, soy, uh, pumpkin seeds, walnuts. Okay, so uh, some simple, simple suggestions here. When you think about good fat, bad fat, omega-3s, top of the list, top of the list. Now, you want to basically maintain... Uh, I say you want to maintain a two to one ratio of your omega threes, you know, your fish, your flax, uh, and should you take fish oils or flax oils? I, absolutely. I, there's no question about it. These are your key anti-inflammatories. There is no better way on this planet than, you know, to, to prevent heart disease, cancer, etc. No better way to prevent illness, untimely, uh, preventable death. No better way to prevent those, those negative outcomes. Uh, than to make certain that you supply and supplement your diet with omega-3 fats. Okay, top of the totem pole, can't beat them, got to have them. If you don't take any other supplement, you don't take any multivitamins, you don't take any vitamin C, you don't take it, whatever. You know, if you're just disinclined to take supplements, that's fine. But boy, I'll tell you what, if you understand the human body and if you understand the disease factors that the human body is up against every day, you do absolutely want to make sure you supplement your diet with omega-3s. No ifs, no ands, no buts. Um, and we just had a phone call a little while ago. We, we advised that she takes flax. Flax. And the best way to take flax, as we highlighted, is not in the oil base and not in the capsule base, but to get the flax seeds, get them home, refrigerate them, get a dedicated coffee grinder, grind up a tablespoon at least a day, add it to your food, and you're covered. That's all you really need to do. Now, on top of that, if you want to add because you can't get too much of this omega-3, believe me. Uh, and if you want to add to that equation, to that support equation, you can use walnuts. 
You can use uh, pumpkin seeds. You can use soy nuts. You can use soy milk. You can use soy cheeses. You can use uh, uh, a variety of different uh, alternative nut butters, for example, like soy nut butter instead of peanut butter. I know Jaro uh, Formulas makes a really fantastic uh, nut butter from pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seed butter, and they have that down at Good Health Natural Foods. But uh, those are anti-inflammatory foods, folks. Those are anti. So you got achy knees and joints. You got arteries that are all loaded up with uh, saturated fats and cholesterol. Uh, you've got concerns about family histories with cancer, etc. This is the way you want to protect yourself and reverse those equations biochemically is get those omega-3 supports. And again, lots of soy, lots of flax, fatty fish. Sardines are actually higher, believe it or not, than any other form of fish. They're higher than any other food on the planet, sardines. Highest level of omega-3s. Uh, but also we talked about soy nut butters, soy cheeses, etc. So those are all great ways to really neutralize and reverse those disease risk factors. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with good fats, bad fats. Don't you go anywhere. All righty, and uh, here to help us talk a little bit about good health natural foods is none other than Candita. How are you? Hey, welcome. How are you doing? Hey, she needs a little mic action there, Larry. Let's try that again. Now here is Candita. Uh, hello. Much better. There you go. <laughs> How are you? Great, Happy great. holidays. Happy holidays to you as well. Yeah, we didn't come last time because of the big snowstorm. We had we had snowstorms and we had uh, last minute things to take care of, yes. and uh, it's been a busy time. So, great to be here again, live on the air with all those That's lovely awesome. folks out there. Great to be back in the saddle. So, what, what's going on in good health? Well, I should apologize to your listeners, although I'm, thank you for being very excited. They thought another semester was starting up because that's oh, what I have probably gotten ten calls. So that's inspired me again to put together another program. There so I'm go. sure we'll be doing something again in March. There you go, folks. Great. I told you you get the word here. It's just unbelievable. They love you. Oh, it's please. great. <laughs> we have a mutual admiration society here in the South Shore. It was unbelievable. It's My phone was ringing off the hook. I'm like, who's calling? I do mean that, though. <laughs> There's a wonderful reciprocity that I share with the wonderful folks in the South Shore. And over the past 26 years, it's meant a great deal to me. They're like my extended wow. family. And I years. have equal appreciation. It's great to know that they're out there and listening. Very good. Well, I should congratulate you. You are a recipient of the Healthy Living Champion Award. Well, thank you so much. You can yeah. Thank you, listeners, for that. As and well. if it weren't for my listeners and for you, that wouldn't exist. So I, th I do. My, my hat is off to all of you folks out there, and uh, you made it a wonderful, wonderful end of 2008 for me. Mm -hmm. So your appreciation is duly noted, and uh, all those wonderful votes and all the great stories that folks told about. Uh, the wonderful work we've done together over the years means a great deal to me. Thank yeah. you. And a lot of those testimonials and the list of the um, health champions will be on my website come January. Great. So great. folks could check out who's on the South Shore. Great. And we're not going to let you down. We're going to keep on going here. We got, That's right. We're just getting started. I know. I have my idea, the Who's Who book. Oh, have, I shouldn't say it too loud. We, we <laughs> have all kinds of wonderful uh, projects and we have all kinds of wonderful visions and uh, directions for this right. new year. And some great announcements that, that are going to be made shortly on the broadcast. But we've been working really, really hard at advancing uh, the cause of alternative medicine and uh, natural living. And uh, we've got some wonderful, wonderful uh, stories to share with all of you and some new chapters in our lives together. Right. So it's going to be a lot of fun in 09, isn't it? Yeah. Are you, are you mentioning the PBS at all? Or well, we're, we're not sure that? which network yet, but we're, we're to, I'll be in shooting tomorrow. We're basically working on a program. Uh, an alternative medicine program, and we're working with a production company, and uh, we've talked to uh, Discovery and TLC and, and PBS, a number of different companies, and there's great, great interest in it. So we're, we're going to go right ahead, and we're going to basically uh, own this production, shoot the pilot, and bring it back and uh, continue those conversations. But we'll have a network, we'll have this thing all sorted out, and it's going to be uh, a weekly one-hour program, and it'll be on one of these networks, and we'll let everybody know that. That's excellent. So, so the filming has already started. We've already started. We'll be in there all day tomorrow. Are you getting into the homes of people? I'll be in Jamaica Plain tomorrow, actually, wow. knocking on a door. <laughs> They'll be setting up cameras at 9.30. They don't want me there till 1 because they don't want me wow. to, to have any contact with the person. It's got to be all fresh as a daisy. So authentic first meeting, you know. That's it. So you open up those open food up, cabinets. Open, yeah, I'll be opening the up the refrigerator and the food cabinets and checking everything out and having our conversation and doing our muscle testing. Right. and. Uh, putting a whole program together, and, uh, and then we follow her progress. And 
and show the world a little, little just a little corner of the alternative medicine right, world. Right. Try to kind of demystify it. That's right. And uh, to break down those the, that iron curtain, so to speak, and to uh, let America basically now uh, know a little bit more is available out there and. Mm -hmm and to share in that experience. That's going to be so informative. I think it's going to be powerful. Because people, I mean, they don't even realize some of the stuff that's in the refrigerator. Are you going to be pulling that stuff out? Yeah, and we're going to actually go down to Good Health Natural Foods, too. Oh, great. We're going to, we're going to shoot one, uh, one day down there and kind of wheel up and down the aisles and uh, talk about the spices that somebody could bring into their diet to increase mm -hmm. their antioxidant and various foods uh, that are better for you and foods that... Uh, are difference makers as well, you know, through the vitamin section and talk about difference makers in the, on the vitamin shelves. And it's going to be inspirational, it's going to be educational, and it's going to be culture shaping. Well, I'm so excited. I applaud all of your effort. You're doing such a great job. Thank you so, so much. Impressed. Thank you. Well, well, I have to talk up good health a little bit now, too. Absolutely. You know, Speaking of family, that, that's our family down there, right? That's right. Good Health Natural Foods, a family grocery store. And this is their mission. I thought it was important. You know, it's the end of the year, and we're just, you know, recapping on everything here. So um, their mission is to bring their customers the best foods, vitamins, health, and beauty items so that you can make informed buying decisions. And they offer all sorts of different products at everyday low prices. Great. And they search for new items all the time. And many of them are exclusive to Good Health, which I didn't know about. They stock their products that, um, that are vegetarian, kosher, organic, and minimally processed. Mm -hmm. They support local farmers and their families. And the New England produce is fresher and sustains our local economy. Absolutely it's true. so important. They're committed to their customers, and they strive to giving back to the neighborhoods that they serve by promoting lasting good health, balance, and well-being. Well, let me tell you a quick story about what's happening in California right now, and it's a trend, and Good Health is already on the leading edge of this trend, and I'll tell you what I mean. In California, the latest thing right now is there are neighborhoods, neighborhoods, uh, whereby there are brokers, okay, and there are brokers in each little neighborhood that are brokering for organic produce coming from people's personal gardens. In other words, if you and I lived in the same neighborhood and you had a lovely, you know, tomato garden and all that stuff, I could be the broker, I knock on the door, we go in and we grab a bushel or two of tomatoes once or twice a week, and we broker that to the big chains, the mm. supermarket chains. That's happening all over California right now. So the money is... Is that like co-op? It, it's, no, it's actually, it's actually uh, independent neighborhood uh, brokered produce right now. Mm. And the money is flowing into these neighborhoods. And it's really remarkable. And the reason it's happening is because for years folks were getting tainted foods. Mm -hmm. You know, they're getting those poison strawberries and all this business. And the folks in California said, we want to know where the food comes from. So here's the world of the future. Folks are coming back to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They want to have a face that they can talk to. They basically want to be able to trace back whatever it is that they purchased. Uh, the world is getting larger in some ways, but it's also coming back to the to the roots and to the way it used to be. So when Why good, we have change that? Absolutely yeah, right. So when Good Health Natural Foods is dealing with specific organic folks, mm -hmm. organic farmers, and you have a problem with the food, you go to Good Health, and Good Health has one face to, to look at. So they can track down and confront those folks, and of course, there are never any problems because of the fact that those those folks are very clear about the fact oh, that yeah they are accepting 100% responsibility for clean, organic foods. So it's organic, and it's close to home, and that's the key. And it's the, I mean, when you think about... You can't um, compare them either. Produce coming from wherever, and the time that it gets to the stores... Absolutely. It's ...actually lose all of its yes. nutrients. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely right. I learned that from you. Well, no, and you know something else, too? <laughs> I think that folks really can appreciate the fact that uh, you're saving money when you don't buy organic. But ironically, you're not getting a bang for your buck. No. Because the amount of vitamin A, for example, in an organic tomato is like 40 to 50 times higher. Mm. So there's a lot more yield in that produce. There's a lot more potentiation of those nutrients in that organic produce. So you're not really saving anything in the final analysis. You should do a chart on that. That would be great. This is what's in it. Well, I also, regular tomato I tomato. also saw a study uh, from California a couple years ago when I was doing my New England cable news segment. And this one particular study said that the uh, amount of antioxidants in organic produce 
can be and often is a hundred percent higher in organic produce so it's roughly between 50 and 100 percent higher mm. that's incredible i mean 50 to 100 percent higher we shouldn't be allowed to grow anything else but well yeah. hey I, I, you're preaching yeah. to the choir i agree yeah, with that's you true. <laughs> so what else is going on in good health well, other things that are going on. Retail with a conscious. This is really cool. They're very concerned about the environment, and I don't know if folks know this, um, but in both of the stores, they offer reusable bags, shopping mm -hmm. bags, mm -hmm. um, waterproof little totes made of recycled materials. They also use environmentally friendly cre cleaning products in their own stores, and the energy-saving lighting in their stores is all um, classified as energy-saving. So they try to thread lightly on the earth to minimize their carbon footprint. So that That's really great. Cool. They also like their fruits and vegetables and health products. Giving back to their community comes naturally to us. Um, they are the proud sponsor of Good Health Natural Food, which is right here, WATD, the Natural Health and Healing Show with Dr. Mark Lincola. Yes, so, they are. They've been here with us right from the first exactly. moment that we opened the door here. Isn't that exciting? Great people. And also, you know, we've been talking about fats as well this evening, the importance of good fats. And I've just emphasized before the break the importance of these omega-3s. You've got to supplement with omega-3s. you got to, got to, got to go there. Well, one of the things they do have at uh, Good Health Natural Foods is the Nordic Naturals line. You cannot get a better line. Nordic Naturals makes remarkable fish oil capsules for children, for adults, the taste good type, the chewable type, all the above. But get down there and get your Nordic Naturals Omega-3s. Great stuff. And when you do, you could say hi to Nick Mincola, by the way. Yeah. Because my son Diane, Nick, who's, Nick. who's uh, going to acupuncture school, he's uh, working uh, daytimes uh, down at uh, Good Health Natural Foods. And Good Health Natural Foods is at 1627 Hancock Street in Quincy. That's right. Phone number is 617-773-4925. That's it. And? And 219 Columbia Road in Hanover, 781-826-0808. For all things natural, it is? Good health natural. Food. There it is. All right. We've got Tom on the line. Tom, how are you? Good, sir. How are you? Hey, Tom. Great. Welcome. Hi. Hey, got a couple questions you asked. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think you probably got a good point there. <laughs> Absolutely, there is a big difference. First answer to the first question, actually, is you're better off to get your sardines uh, in, packed in spring water. That's number one, because obviously uh, the, uh, the concentration of omega-3s in the, in the sardines is really high, but why offset that with, with monounsaturates? So you want to keep the sardines in that water, all right? So spring water sardines. Number two... Uh, there's a big difference. EPA is icosapentaenoic acid, DHA is dicosahexaenoic acid. Uh, they're both really important omega-3s, but if you really look at the research on it, there's no question about the fact that the DHAs are really where the therapeutic value comes from. Uh, so when you, when, you do, when you look at the studies uh, regarding depression or uh, attention deficit, etc., etc., it's always the DHAs that really come out shining. Not that the EPAs are a problem, but I think that uh, if you were to ask me be, be, between the EPAs and the DHAs, if you were going to take one of those two, which would it be? It would clearly be the DHAs. Do you get both you, you actually do, yes, indeed. Um, in salmon, in mackerel, in halibut, but uh, the concentration in sardines is far greater. Far do you greater. Lose the fat when you bake, say, for example, salmon? No, you do not. Uh, the one thing you want to pay close attention to about that, though, uh, Tom, is you want to make sure that you get wild salmon. Skip the farm raised because I did see one study from Alaska that pointed out that the, the fat, the total fat, the saturated fat uh, in salmon that is farm raised can be 200 times higher. 200 times higher. So, uh, you know, you want to go for the omega 
3, and again, a lot of the tilapia, for example, is very high in omega-6 because of the way they feed them. So, well, yes, it is a bad thing. I mean, omega-6s are important and they're, held, they're part of the essential fatty acid chain as well. Uh, but there's a problem with the ratios. Uh, our ancestors, many, many moons ago, used to maintain a significantly higher ratio, like a 25 to 1 ratio of 3 to 6. And nowadays, we're reversed in those ratios. The, uh, typically, the average American ratio is uh, more, it's higher in the omega-6, and it's 20 to 1 and as high as 50 to 1. Therefore, we're, we're you know, over 1,000 times off in our ratio. Yes. And I figure this is a quality product, blah, blah, blah. Correct and true. You say, take the black seed. Am I getting the same type of DHA? No, 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 you're not. You're, the, the key really is you're getting the omega-3s. So what I want to point out to folks is, is that if you're taking flax and fish, you're probably that much better off because one of the things I did say this evening is you can't get too much omega-3s. It's, it's, it's virtually impossible. What I do is I take um, both a concentration of the Nordic natural omega-3s and I also take flax, flax seeds as well. Same benefits, absolutely. They're slightly different fats, and I'm not going to get too complicated about that, but for all intents and purposes, you're really going to get the same same great benefit from both of those. Are we better off taking it throughout the day rather than all at one time? No, not necessarily, and the reason for that is because fats are pretty well, you know, con they're stable. Fats are very concentrated, they're very stable. And if somebody has a problem, for example, with their gallbladder, if somebody has a problem with their liver, uh, if, they've, if they've got a compromised fatty acid metabolism, then you might want to spread it out, break it down a little bit. I see. Doctor, I want to thank you so much for taking the call. Because so many times there's like little questions like that that the listening audience has. I've talked to other people, and they say, yeah, I heard the show. I went online and I listened to the show. It's like, it's too bad they didn't have a place that you can drop an email or call up and ask well, a well, we actually do. We have a website. It's uh, maxhealing.com. Yeah. And you, you, you can actually fire off questions there through, through the uh, website because we do actually have, uh, we have contact listed on there. But we also, you know, welcome everybody to call in each and every Sunday night throughout the show. So what you did was right what we want. It's exactly what we expect from folks. And, uh, oh, it is a great product. Well, that's great for you to say that, and uh, we thank you so much for your support. And have a have a have a healthy New Year. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. All right, bye bye. I don't know if Tom knows that we have the uh, January fifth this Monday coming out the pH balance class. Yes. Live, yes, which indeed. Is also another component to what we do. Mm -hmm. For only forty dollars, folks can come and, and, and learn pH about pH the is a really important part of the equation as well, and even part of the fatty acid equation because. You know, back to what we just said uh, with Tom, you can't get too much of this omega-3. So, yes, we encourage people to take the flax and the fish, absolutely, because, once again, let me, let me make this point. Our ancestors had a ratio of 25, even 30 to 1, 50 to 1, really high ratios of omega-3 to omega-6. That's why they were, that, that, that's why there was no heart disease and why there was no cancer among our ancient ancestors. Right. All right. So the key nowadays is that we're actually feeding our inflammatory systems and encouraging disease by having the total opposite ratio of six to threes. So beef up those fish oils, those sardines, uh, beef up the uh, the Nordic Naturals uh, fish oil capsules and the flax, etc. I didn't know that about the omega six. That sometimes absolutely. Well, you know why? Because if you read a box of crackers, if you read potato chips, if you read virtually all the fast foods the kids snack on and that sort of thing, right. uh, I mean harmless whole wheat crackers, for example. There's always vegetable oils in there. Uh -huh. What do we use for salad dressings? Vegetable oils. What do we use for for mayonnaise and and, and virtually all of our condiments? We're flooded. We're, we're constantly being spiked with omega-6 vegetable, 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 on and on and on and on and on. You know, and vegetable is not a bad thing unless 
it's in a significantly higher ratio than omega threes. So, so you I say you've right? got to absolutely have a, a significantly. You know, you should be at least two to one, at least in terms of your ratio. Two parts omega three, one part omega six, at least. That's your beginning. So again, you know, take Is the there fish. Is there some way you could test that with levels or anything? You don't really have to. I tell people if you take two thousand milligrams of uh, the omega three fish oils a day and you use a tablespoon of flax a day, you're covered. You'll basically be covered. And then obviously your diet should have some good uh, fatty fish uh, from time to time, at least once or twice a week, right. and that should get it done. We got Mary on the line. Hey, welcome, Mary. Happy New Year. Hi, Mark. Hi, Candy. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just was going to say, if Tom is still listening, he's going to be really great. Um, Very nice. Seasoned brand sardines are great. I don't know of anybody who's done that, and I don't think it really would be particularly effective to vacuum-packed walnuts. I think that the key really is you want to basically keep them in the shell and you want to crack them because the minute you crack that shell, you can transport them into a vacuum seal like that, but they start breaking down almost immediately. So in theory, you want to get them in their shells if you really want to do it the right way. Yeah, we actually started. It's on the website, and we, we put our first breakfast, lunch, and dinner on yeah, there, but we, we've just uh, been so busy doing other stuff that we haven't had time between the holidays and, and the other projects we're doing, etc. So we're going to, after the first of the year, we're going to clear out some time, likely in late January, early February, and start getting that up and running again as well. Oh, I'm sure that we can uh, turn you on to that one. In fact, there's a number of companies. Obviously, if you take like the Amy's company, for example, they make a, a vinegar-free salsa, for example, uh, and they do so by using lemon juice. So uh, things like lemon and cumin really both really work well. Uh, also, the product that I like to use in place of vinegar as a substitute for vinegar in virtually anything you want to make would, would be the um, Vogel, V-O-G-E-L, out of Switzerland. Uh, makes a Molkasan, M-O-L-K-O-S-A-N product, and that's just like vinegar. It really is, and it's a lacto-fermented whey product. That's really great stuff. Yep. There, there have been some studies about that, and vitamin B6 is the one that's usually recommended, the pyridoxine hydrochloride. You might have them try 100 milligrams of B6 with uh, meals three times a day, just before meals three times a day. I think so. I think Solgar works great. Hey, have a wonderful new year. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. I know, that was really cool, the uh, smoothie that you did. <laughs> you I, like that? I actually hide the tofu in, in the smoothie, and the kids eat it. They're like, wow, this is delicious. I'm and like, if you add the KAL brand Stevia Drops, you know, to that smoothie, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's yeah. a great, great drink. You can trick those kids into it. Yeah, they they never know the I difference. I actually just did it, ice fruit and the tofu, and they were like, "Oh, this is great! Give it's us great more stuff. dessert, Mom." It's like, great okay, stuff. Okay, here's the dessert. So thank you so much. Thank you. This and is a great show. You thank you. Thank you. Thanks. In. Have a happy new year. You too. And uh, give those kids a hug. I will. All right. Thank you All so right. much. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. All righty. Welcome back. All right, we got to get right back to this here. We want to make sure we uh, tie the bow on this uh, program this evening. We started off talking about the essential uh, fatty acids, of course, omega-3s, top of the shelf. Omega-6s, we don't want to sell them uh, upstream. We know they're important. They are all about the polyunsaturated linoleic and gamma-linoleic acids, which are found, of course, in vegetable oils, nuts, seeds, uh, and you find them in soybean oils, sunflower, canola, corn oils most commonly. They are hormonal regulators. They're also cellular healers, deficiencies of omega-6s would include arthritis, diabetes, skin conditions, even MS. A lot of uh, wonderful work uh, that was done um, over the years 
um, up in Montreal, I'm trying to think, the Montreal Clinic, uh, the um, uh, stuff that was, uh, I can't think of the uh, research on that, but right now it's the omega-6s for the uh, multiple sclerosis it was all about the uh, Swank, Roy Swank, that's who it is. Roy Swank, of course, is out in Oregon right now. He did all the breakthrough uh, Swank diet research where he's able to to basically cure 80% of the multiple sclerosis up at the University of Montreal Hospital back in the early 80s with sunflower oil, sunflower oil. So we don't want to, you know, we don't want to give the wrong impression about the potential healing of, uh, powers of omega-6s and they are natural fats, of course, but, you know, the key is to maintain a ratio. Keep a higher level of your 3s to your 6s, as we just said with Candida. That is the key. How about non-essential oils? How about those? Omega-9s, omega-9s. The monounsaturated fats found in olive oil, that's chiefly where you think of your monounsaturated omega-9 fats. Not essential, great oils though, olive oil, almonds, hazelnuts, uh, macadamia, sesame, avocados. What do they do? Well, the omega-9s will prevent fats from sticking to the arterial walls. They'll prevent uh, atherosclerosis, of course, and uh, those are very, very important uh, non-essential fatty acids as well. And maybe the most important thing to remind everybody is the kind of unhealthy bad fats to avoid. Saturated fats, of course, uh, you know, that are con concentrated in a lot of the, you know, prime rib. We talk about prime rib as being 44% fat. Uh, you don't want to go there if you don't really have to. Hydrogenated fats, we mentioned those earlier in your ver various margarines and whatnot. Palm oil, which is an additive. Uh, trans fatty uh, acids, which of course are additives as well. Rancid fats are your overheated fats. You want to be careful of that. Now, olive oil uh, tolerates heat and what they call the smoke factor uh, pretty, pretty well. But if you get into some of your uh, leaner polyunsaturated oils, for example, your sunflower, safflower oils, folks, you don't want to be doing any kind of sautéing or frying or baking or cooking with those if you don't really have to. I say you want to use your olive oil for your sautéing because it tolerates the heat. It doesn't get rancid and also for baking and whatnot, probably a little bit of canola or again olive oil because of the monounsaturated omega-9 insulation. So they, they tolerate that heat reasonably well. The trans fatty acids, real problems, they will increase cancer risks, no ifs, ands, or buts. Rancid fats, same thing from overheated fats. Fried foods, need I even go there? I probably uh, shouldn't even have to go there. Remember what we said earlier too, excess sugars and starches. Remember that point we made earlier in the broadcast, excess sugars and starches, uh, beyond what your, your caloric energy needs are all about, but beyond what you can use, you're simply going to convert those into cholesterol and saturated fat. So beware. So that's the skinny on good fats, bad fats. Uh, folks want to watch this program. If you want to see it again, you want to hear it, make notes on it, you can go to our website, www.maxhealing.com. As we've said earlier, that's... Uh, an easy way to access that, and with thanks of the technology of Adam Ng, we're able to uh, podcast this this program to you, so you can watch it. Uh, pleased to uh, also announce that uh, we can actually um, uh, pick up uh, a lot of these uh, tidbits from the past as well. So all the different programs are streaming on there, not just this most recent show. So if you want to go back and look up some past uh, programs, you can do that as well. And, uh, of course, I'll be on NECN uh, this week, uh, this coming Wednesday at 9.45, 10.45, 11.45 to talk about healthy New Year's Eve, res healthy New Year's resolution. So, hey, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, safe, happy, healthy, prosperous New Year starting right off this coming week. And uh, until next Sunday at 8, this is Mark Mincola reminding you, please, be wise, be aware, be well. Make it a healthy week and a healthy New Year. God bless.